Meow, meow, love me cat. Live on tape, from inside a scratching post, it's the Love Me Cat Show, with Owly, Bronzo the Robot, and Chibi, the full-time audience member. <laughs> Today, seriously, with Maurice Lamarck. And here's your embodied request for affection, Love Me Cat. Hi, Hi. Internet. Hi, Maurice Lamarche. Hi, Love Me Cat. So you started off in front of the camera, stand-up <clears throat> comedian, yeah. uh, and then your life took a turn. Big turn. What, what happened? Uh, you know, I'm gonna get serious with cat. This if that's is, okay. Yeah. Uh, what I, I, everything was going along great guns, and my dad uh, had the had the the bad luck to be uh, uh, friends with a sociopath all of his life, mm. and uh, one day the sociopath uh, thought it thought it would be a good way to deal with his frustrations by uh, murdering my father. Oh my god! My and I spun out in terms of stand-up comedy. So. I, I stopped. I stopped making people laugh, you know, f for a living. I, I I couldn't find my laugh. I was I was devastated by my father's death, and and uh, I've uh, I've become a sort of morose uh, uh, person, which is why I'm talking to you about my father's mm -hmm. murder here in uh, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Steve. But Phoebe. that's the stuff. I guess I guess it builds uh, character. That which doesn't kill me. Mm -hmm. What was your character like Doesn't, before? I actually had kind of a naive world view that the world was basically a good place, but <laughs> ah! <laughs> sort of screwed it up for me. <laughs> was your father in a in a dangerous profession? No, he was a stockbroker. Well, I mean, its own oh. way is kind of mm -hmm. dangerous, but you know, he was a stockbroker, and uh, no, he just had the bad luck to have uh, befriended a sociopath. Check your friends list, by the way, for sociopaths. Oh boy, what it's is, always what important. Is a sociopath? A sociopath is someone who has the absolute inability to feel regret or guilt for anything they've done. They have absolutely, they'll do anything they need to, to achieve what they want. And, uh oh, uh, that was my Myers Briggs <laughs> test result. <laughs> <That's six. laughs> Afraid to say. Hey, <laughs> hey, the show ain't complete without one good Myers Briggs reference. <laughs> They're, they're like animals who can talk and charm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, who ever heard of that? And he's a man that I called uncle huh? all my life. Oh. Really? Yeah, he's, I'd, I'd known him since I was, you know, since I was born, but I mean, I had the earliest memories of him when I was three years old. Tremendous shock. Wow, yeah. so it's a Hamlet situation. More or less. Oh my God. Yeah. You must be sad every Uncle's Day. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm lobbying to have Uncle's Day removed. Yeah, from the we calendar. really should get rid of that. <laughs> Do you feel. Um, <laughs> like a, a vengeful? Yes, every day. And and how, how does that play out? <sighs> you you want the long story? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. The long story is two parter. I've internet. gone to, I've gone to, I'd gone to three parole hearings. Mm -hmm. And on the fourth parole hearing was going to be the first time in in uh, Canadian law, which is all mm -hmm. happened in Canada, where I was going to be allowed to speak. I was flying to Vancouver, and I was going to write my my statement on the plane, and I couldn't. I mean, I, I'd, I'd been I'd been dry for weeks, uh, you know, trying to. I'd written everything there was to write. Anyway, I end up on the same flight as the Dalai Lama. Mm. This is Dalai Lama. Story, the Dalai Lama. Wow. Dalai Lama. And I actually, <laughs> you'd appreciate my this. My favorite Lama. Lama. The, the Dalai the Dalai Lama. He's kind of in your in your neighborhood, and I um, I wrote a note. I wrote a note to the, to the Dalai Lama, and I actually had his secretary pass it to him, and he actually saw me on the plane. He actually deigned to have a little, t like, mini audience with me. I sat next to him, and he gave me uh, a meditation. Bag of peanuts? No, not a bag of peanuts. Because <laughs> no, those no. are free. <laughs> so yeah. he gave you that. Not yeah. much of a gesture. <laughs> he said, I imagine you have a prison in your mind for this man, a torture chamber and you do terrible things to him in it. And I said, yes, I do, Your Holiness. And he said, I want you to open the door and let him out of the prison of your mind. And the second that the Dalai Lama said that to me, that visualization, I, I actually let the guy out. It was sort of, it was, it was, it was, it was an almost, it was a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. Now, he, every morning I wake up, he's back in there. I have to do it every day. And before I do it, there's some dextering that goes on in my brain. <laughs> right. And yeah. then, but what happens is I become aware of what it does to me. It's not doing a damn thing to him. Sure. But mm. what it's doing to me is why I do the meditation and let him out. Maurice? Yes? I just wanted to thank you for being so honest and open 
in this peculiar circumstance. It's the only way I know.